Hey y'all, Worm here. Welcome to episode 4 of the class lore series. In this series we explore the lore behind the individual classes of Final Fantasy XIV. For the subject of this episode we're headed back to Ulda to explore the lore behind easily one of the most recognisable classes in the game, the Thaumaturge. As always, let's begin with the official description from the FF14 website. In the hands of a skilled practitioner, Thaumaturgy can be a force of terrifying destruction. At the heart of this school of magic lies the ability to call forth and command the latent aether within oneself, through deep introspection. To then mould that aether into sorcery, the Thaumaturge makes use of a scepter or staff, within which is housed a medium of natural stone, imbued with magical properties. Thus armed, the Thaumaturge is capable of wreaking considerable havoc via ruinous spells and curses. The Thaumaturge has a pretty storied history. One could say given the spells they wield, it could even trace its roots back as far back as the second astral era, where the first forms of magic took root. But we know for sure the arts employed by Thaumaturgy can trace their confirmed written roots to the ancient nation of Hatch. It's here that most of the spells utilised by modern Thaumaturgy were created, and these same spells and practices led to the creation of many other forms of magical arts. One we know very well which Hatch is famous for, the Black Mage. However records show the creation of arts like this were uncovered by Hatch and not a direct creation, which leaves the exact time of their creation a deep mystery. Back on topic though, the first appearance of what would become the Thama Church was in the ancient city state of Belladea. This nation was founded many years after the events of the Sixth Umbral Era, when fears of magi and magical practices were long forgotten. Thus the Lalafellian descendants of the long gone Hatchi civilization came together in Thanalan to found the nation of Belladea. The arts that would become Thaumaturgy began with the priests of the order of Nal Thal, to where much of the known magical knowledge was passed down and taught. These arts were in fact primarily utilised in the funeral rites of this order, mainly by those of the Azerneth Ossuary. In this place the dead were prepared and the funeral rites performed. A freezing blizzard to halt corruption. A raging fire to cleanse the corpse. Finally bolts of lightning to expel the sins of mortal life. It's through the practice of these magics that they discovered that these same spells could be used to great effect on the living. Thus over time a new art was developed. The Azaneth Ossuary now also came to serve as the Thaumaturge's guild. The art of modern Thaumaturgy was born. This continued until the death of the sitting Belladea Sultan many years later, after which two princes competed for the throne. The end result of which Belladea was torn in two and became two nations, Ulda and Sildi. Wars between these two nations were common, Thaumaturge is often playing a key role in the armies of both nations. Many years later, both nations were locked in a dead stalemate, however it was Ulda and the Thaumaturge's guild that broke this stalemate. The guild, using their knowledge of the arcane and magic, combined with the order's knowledge of the funeral rites of the dead, developed a new weapon, a powder, that turned the corpses of the dead into zombies. The armies of Ulda catapulted this powder over the walls of Sildi and madness ensued. Ulda's sultan at the time fabricated the story that Sildi's leadership was transforming their own dead into zombies to win the war. Thus were Uldan's forces rallied and stormed the city, whose defences were already weakened by what was happening within their walls. Thaumaturge has played a key role in Uldan's ranks, and the nation of Sildi fell. This was a dark chapter for the Thaumaturge's guilt. They developed a weapon that was the direct cause of the fall of a nation. In modern day Ulda, Thaumaturgy thrives within the guild, as well as with adventurers and within the grand companies. The guild of this modern day learned the lessons of the past however, and forbade the study of cataclysmically dangerous arts and practices, such as tapping into summoning Void's End, development of weapons like the powder to reanimate corpses, and even at the lost art of the black mage, which shares many parallels with Thaumaturgy. That about does it for the history. Now let's talk about the magic they wield. As mentioned before, they started off wielding ice, fire and lightning magic for funeral rites, which they then developed into modern thaumaturgy. However this is where the beauty of thaumaturgy lies. 
The mastery of these spells, in conjunction with each other, allows a mage to cast successful spells and chains, while constantly replenishing their aether, with a combination of ice magic, as well as some of their paraphernalia. A great example, and one passed down for generations, were special hats and robes that aided with the absorption of aether, from the environment around the caster. This is actually something black mages mastered long ago, to which Thaumaturge is inherited. For those wishing to learn the art, they can find it a rather simple process, but one prone to accidents if they don't focus. This gave rise to the tale that this art was easy to learn, but very difficult to master. Thaumaturge you see employ across the world at this point, the art having long since crossed the borders of Ulda and could be found the world over. The Garlean Empire is one such example, and employs units of their own that wield the arts, as do mercenaries and armed forces of other nations. A great recent example of their employment in battle was the Thaumaturge is playing a key role in the Siege of Valamigo. To breach the gates of the city, the Eorzean Alliance had the Thaumaturge's guild employ fire magic to heat the gates of the city, then ice magic to cool them, causing them to become brittle for modern artillery to breach. The guild has since gone on to serve in the grand companies in most of the major engagements of modern time, but also importantly have been training new cadets to join these companies, and most of all were responsible for teaching the Warrior of Light the arts of the Thaumaturge. And that just about does it for the Thaumaturge. Thanks for watching everyone. Leave your thoughts and stories about Thaumaturgy in the comments. Hit that like button if you enjoyed, and feel free to subscribe to stay tuned for more videos, to which I have a great many planned. Thanks all, and now, as always, have a good one.